Oké, okay, volgens mij gaat u nu opnemen. Ja, yeah, dat is correct. Uh, nou, um, you have to allow me to share my screen. Ja, yeah. <laughs> yeah. here it is. Should work now. Ja, yeah, that's correct. Oké, okay, I'll wait. How many participants we have now? Five from the students. So we lost Rohit compared to yesterday. And who else? And it would really be good if we could start today with an even number of persons because of the work in Paris. Um, Marike is on her way. Um, she has some trouble finding a quiet spot. Okay, good to hear. So, so Hendrik, you're gonna first finish the lecture from yesterday. That's correct. Um, I will open my presentation and and after that, continue with the assignment. Good. Yeah, I will also try to put the recordings uh, online and make them available via Brightspace. But yeah, this will need some editing and that takes some time because the video files are a bit large and the, the actions on YouTube are then slow. Uh, but I will try to put cleaned uh, videos on, uh, on Brightspace of the lectures. So if somebody could not be present, can go to the, the yeah, recording lecture uh, directly without uh, the preliminary stuff or the, the break in between. And that you're still in the edit mode, uh, at least on the shared screen. Edit mode? Oh, I see my yeah. full, not on the shared screen, it is still edit. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. see what I can do. Um, I open it on my own screen, I see it in presentation mode. Um, I'm doing something wrong, I suppose. For me, this is the first time to... Uh, yeah, it's always tricky. <laughs> yeah, normally I'm all on the other side. Um, Can you stop the presentation? Yes, I will stop. Or maybe keep the presentation and share screen again. And then you can often select oh, okay. one, yeah. one of the windows. Hi, Marika, good that you're there. <laughs> We're still uh, getting started, so missed nothing yet. So if you have your presentation in presentation mode and then do share screen and go to the full window. Yeah, that is an interesting uh, one. Um, but if I am in presentation mode, I cannot see my... Yes, I think that's the problem. You have um, to right or not? No, one, one. three. I know. You, uh, okay, what you then can also do is share the complete desktop. Then for sure, if you see the... Yeah, okay. I go to... Uh, so first share everything, the whole screen and not a specific window. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, I'm now going to open my... On screen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then, yeah, that's the trick. Okay. Yeah. Some explanation yeah. for the students. Normally, I'm on the other side. So I'm watching presentations by students. And uh, I haven't done a lecture, I think, by Zoom before. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I think we are complete. Um, as I, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pity we cannot meet in the faculty, but I hope next week uh, yeah, I will back, be back. It's just for security that we are here at Zoom. Um, I want to finish first my lecture um, because that's the material you need uh, for your assignment. Um, we ended from here yeah, that, uh, by Larson from oral agreement to title registration. Um, this suggests a certain development and that's, that's right because you go from a yeah, weak system relying on the witnesses to uh, a very formal system that uh, offers security by the government and by the uh, agency of land registration, uh, land administration uh, itself. Um, however, and that's also for the next slides I'm going to present, it gives a very black and white image and uh, take care of it. So it's extremely simplified. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, especially um, because the whole image, I can say that Larson's sketch is a bit uh, Eurocentric. It is uh, Western world offering the solutions. And that's exactly what happened, but that's during uh, the times, for instance, when, uh, especially in Asia and in Africa, countries were colonies, uh, colonized by uh, European uh, countries, that they put their formal system in those countries and ignoring um, existing uh, yeah, customary law, customary systems. Um, that means, and we will see that uh, in another presentation where we have a look at Indonesia, um, that for instance, uh, the Dutch introduced their Dutch uh, system of uh, land administration but it was only kept for uh, land that was owned under the Dutch, uh, Indonesian Dutch land laws. So what you had in a country like that was that on one hand you had uh, the customary law that's called adult law. And on the other hand, you had land that was owned under the civil code introduced by the Dutch. Um, the legacy, uh, in 1945, Indonesia gained independence. That independence was uh, formalized, uh, recognized by the Dutch government in 1947. And that me means that still until the day of today, um, there are two systems, the adult system, traditional system, and the former uh, Dutch system. And that has also influence on the land administration. Um, I'm not going to tell too much about it because I think we can uh, uh, have at least two lectures about this kind of challenges. But there's something you should keep in mind at the moment you select a country. So um, there can be just a formal system um, yeah, introduced by uh, a European country while there are still land owned and uh, um, transferred under under the traditional systems. And there's also, I think, the weakness of the Soto. And I told you about the Soto that gives an answer. Uh, yeah, people are owning, having, having rights on their land, but they cannot use it as collateral to get a mortgage because they are not formally registered. But in fact, there is one step before that is that the law system should also recognize those customary tenures. At the moment you don't do that, so you say, no, we don't recognize those customary tenures and we only recognize the formal tenures as we find it in land administration. Yeah, the, in fact, what you see there is that the people who hold their land have no right that will be recognized. So in fact, the Soto gives an answer, but only registration is not the answer itself. You should also recognize those rights. Uh, I think, Peter, at the moment you are dealing with the uh, LADM, you will also talk about that we can put those customary rights into the system. But for the correct, moment... Yeah. Yeah. So then you see the conflicts uh, arriving and it's good to be complete, uh, even if it's conflicting. And okay, that's a task for being uh, yeah, uh, resolved. And you see it in former European, uh, Eastern European countries where they have, say, the... Yeah, the pre-communist registration, 
and then the post-communist registration, and they are also not uh, yeah, in indicating the same parcels and same owners. But it's good to be aware of these conflicts, because if you have a document proving that your owner, even if it's an old document, it's still a valid document, uh, despite the fact that later there was some kind of new registration uh, changing these uh, yeah, parcels and, and, and owners. So, uh, and the registration should be kind of uh, aware of the yeah, uh, possible conflicting interest. And it sounds strange, but we should also register these conflicting areas to resolve them. Yeah, that's what we now, uh, we are aware about that. And that's indeed also an uh, aspect of the whole issue of uh, land administration. So again, I'm giving a very, simplified image uh, also the topology uh, deed versus title is extremely simplified so be aware about that so it is in black and white image while it is more gray or you could also say more colorful um yeah and that uh, applies i think also to those uh, four basic principles of land administration because this reflects um yeah the way we are dealing with uh, land administration from uh, deed, uh, re also registration of deeds and title registration. Um, those four principles, yeah, the booking or register principle, yeah, that says uh, that uh, we only recognize a uh, uh, title uh, tenure when it is registered. Now, here you see that exactly that conflict. So at the moment, there are other titles and titlements to the land that are not registered. In fact, this booking principle says, yeah, we can't recognize it because it is not registered in the land administration. So it's a very formal approach, you see. Um, second is the consent principle. So that says that at the moment, uh, someone is registered in the land administration uh, to be an owner, that only with his consent or her consent that can be changed into another owner. So there should be in the document that is um, uh, proving the transaction. So A sells to B. In that same document, A in fact gives the consent that his or her name that is uh, registered in land administration will be changed into B. Now you will understand that this is applicable to a registration, a title registration, while in a deed registration, yeah, um, that that uh, um, uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about it when I'm dealing uh, with the Dutch system. You will see what happens uh, in that case when. Uh, we register indeed in the system. Uh, yeah, the information should also be uh, open for the public, so we can know it. So no secret system only held by the government, but it should be open for the public. Now, also here is gray because we have systems that are extremely open, like the Dutch, and our systems. Yeah, I can only access it when I uh, have an interest in it. So that's. Uh, limited to professionals. So one of the conflicts you can have in a country like that is, for instance, that a journalist who wants to investigate what a certain person owns, because that's a public person, um, yeah, has to go to court to ask to get permission to uh, investigate the land administration. And in some cases, the court says, yeah, there is no uh, interest that you can access it. So they forbid that you can uh, uh, look up in the system who owns a certain plot of land. There's also what next uh, week, uh, uh, there is uh, that uh, video about who owns uh, England. Uh, I ask you all to, to watch that, it's 60 minutes. And uh, but that's also about that case. Uh, are we allowed to know who is owning a piece of land in England? Yes, and then uh, the final principle that is uh, about that uh, identification. Uh, well, you know that that uh, very simple model of uh, who, uh, what, and where. Yeah, that's about the where question. Uh, it should be identified that uh, uh, real property. 
that said, um, yeah, a very simplified uh, topology, and there are two main systems, registration of deeds and the registration of title. Um, registration of deeds, now deeds is not nothing else than a legal document, and the registration of deeds is a uh, collection of those deeds, nothing more, nothing less. And uh, those deeds are uh, uh, collected in the way uh, on uh, they enter, they are um, given to the Office of Land Registration. And for instance, in kind of the, in the example of a deed would be that in that deed, the property, the real property is transferred from A to B. Um, in a kind of system like that, there are no guarantees. Uh, the deed itself does not prove the title. It only says that A wants to transfer to B. Um, for that transfer to be valid in a legal sense, then it should be that A is the real owner. And so it is possible that A is not the owner, but in a certain X. Now still a deed, uh, Declaring that A transferred to B can be registered. Uh, the register, so it's the person who is in charge of the land administration of the public registers, is not going to investigate if E is really the owner. Now, in a system like that, uh, there are no checks. It is possible that someone will uh, register a deed uh, declaring that uh, he's the owner, but in fact, he's not the real owner. You will understand that in a system like that, there's not much security offered. Now, we will see. This also mentioned in the paper uh, written by Jaap Sevenberg and uh, I about uh, that uh, change uh, from uh, registration of deed into a title registration. You will see that the image is much more gray and that is not really a system, uh, maybe that's the, the, the most simple uh, registration of deed that offers absolutely no uh, guarantees. While uh, in the Netherlands we have a uh, registration of deeds, but we see that in practice uh, we rely on it. And why? I will explain uh, later on. But it's just yeah, a set of records uh, recording uh, all transactions, nothing more and nothing less. Uh, but, however, uh, to give some uh, guarantees, uh, not really guarantees, but uh, some, uh, we can rely on it, there will be a legal specialist who will do, and that, uh, we call it a title search, before the transfer. So it is not just two parties making up a deed and A declares that he transferred to B. No. Um, uh, legal specialist, and that's in the Netherlands, that's an, uh, we call that a notaris, public notary, will check if A is indeed the owner. And if uh, he discovers that A is not the owner or cannot prove that he is the owner, he won't make up the deed. Um, that's a kind of way to give some guarantees. But that guarantee is not because of the land administration, but it's because of a legal practitioner. Then, uh, yeah, the other side, that is uh, the registration of title or title registration. And there we see that the registration kept by uh, the agency, uh, in fact, reflects the legal situation. So what they do is not only, uh, so they get a deed or legal document where they can see that there is a transfer from A to B, but what they will do is that they register B being the new owner. And then, yeah, the interesting uh, step uh, that we make from registration of deed to title registration is that the register is the proof of the ownership itself. So there are guarantees by the government. So at the moment, the government makes a mistake. Someone uh, uh, is registered while the seller was not uh, the, the, the owner, uh, him or herself. Then B will still be the owner, while they will compensate uh, the real owner, uh, real, uh, uh, you lost your ownership eh, because of the registration in the land administration, but you will be compensated. 
Now, again, this very simplified image because also uh, when we have a closer look at the systems of title registration, you will see that the way, um, in fact, that guarantee is given differs between several uh, countries. And it's also what Jaap Sevenberg uh, puts emphasis on in his uh, PZ thesis, that you should not only look at the topology, uh, how do they call the system themselves, but you should call, look how it works, that he calls it uh, the system approach. So that's important. So don't rely on uh, the topology itself, but investigate how it really works. Okay, that's the black and white picture. So keep that in mind, but also keep in mind there are grays or colors. And I will go to a more colorful uh, picture uh, for a general overview of uh, land registration systems. Now here, uh, St Stig Enemar calls it, uh, calls it land register registration systems. Eh? Remember yesterday I told you that uh, the whole uh, uh, that is a bit confusing because people are using uh, other words for the same. Um, and yeah, also there's a very general overview, which you see that in Europe you have uh, yeah, this, uh, more uh, German systems, Scandinavia, Central Europe, while uh, yeah, um, it's the legacy of uh, Napoleon, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Italy, uh, Spain, Portugal. Uh, have the French system, uh, so that's registration of deeds. Now, if you look at uh, countries, uh, you can see that there are also uh, that there are those uh, uh, black uh, or sorry, white, uh, blue, or it is uh, uh, reflects that there are mixed uh, systems. Uh, but you can also see that, for instance, in Africa, it is very clear that where the French were in charge in the past and where the English introduced their systems. Now, of course, yeah, in uh, uh, Australia, you see the torrent system. But again, that also reflects that uh, yeah, the rights of uh, the, the, the First Nation people, Aboriginals, are forgotten in the whole picture. So uh, the, the whole of Australia is torrents. So we only uh, believe that uh, the rights that are regist registered in the torrent system are there. Now, nowadays, we know that uh, we should take a more uh, careful approach to that. But still, it is an, uh, gives them a nice overview of the different systems all over the world. Um, yeah, when we are talking about different systems, um, uh, please uh, be aware that within one country um, you can have uh, different systems um, next to each other. Uh, for instance, the uh, uh, final one is the transition that we are moving from the registration of deeds or even unregistered land towards a uh, title registration. Uh, not all the parcels are transferred uh, at the same time. So that can take uh, 50 years, maybe uh, 100 years before the whole of the country uh, transferred to, to uh, the new system. Uh, another thing can be, uh, of course, historical reasons. Uh, we look at France now, it is a disputed area. Uh, you can say it's no longer disputed, but in uh, 1870, uh, so more than 100 years ago, the Germans invaded France and they uh, uh, conquered uh, or grabbed, you could say, a uh, part of France, uh, the, the Alsace, they called it the Alsace. And after the First World War, it was again France, but in between the Germans introduced their system of land administration. And then, yeah. When it got back to France, of course, you can wonder now, are we going to abolish that again and reintroduce the registration of deeds as we had from the times of Napoleon? But of course, that will take a lot of effort and cost, and maybe also the German uh, title registration offers, of course, more guarantees. So they kept the German system. That's a good example that you have two uh, systems within one country. 
And of course, it can also be a political reason behind it. Uh, Canada is an uh, example, but also India. That uh, you say that, that the whole question of land law and land administration is not a task of the uh, central government, uh, but that is uh, per state, and each state can make another decision also uh, based on historical uh, reasons. And yeah, the third one uh, is that there are different legal systems. Uh, Indonesia, on one hand, we have the ADAT law, customary law, uh, versus yeah, what we call the formal law uh, of the civil code. So there are two systems uh, uh, next to each other. So please be aware of that. Um, yeah, another one that's to, to illustrate the change, uh, the United Kingdom. Now, not only change, but also different systems within one uh, country. Uh, United Kingdom, uh, yeah, that is uh, Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And what we see is that uh, the land registry, uh, uh, Her Majesty's land registry, is responsible for England and Wales. Um, Scotland has its own registers, and also Northern Ireland. And that's uh, a part of Ireland that is, uh, belongs to the United, United Kingdom, has also its own uh, registration, uh, the land and property services. Next to that, so three systems within uh, one uh, country, there is also, uh, because of that change that started from 1925, uh, uh, that moment in that year, the new uh, land administration was introduced in England and Wales. Before that, we had that private conveyancing, so people should keep their deeds to prove they are the owner. Now, what we see that until now, 15% of the land is still unregistered. Now, this, uh, I found on this nice website there they also explain how they could make this map. It's also we are going to discuss next week. Uh, also, the video "Who Owns England" is about this. Um, yeah, they made a map of the unregistered land in uh, you, uh, in England and Wales, and this is interesting because if you look, have a look at the map on this scale, it looks very impressive. It looks like uh, most of the parts of England are still unregistered. Let's have a closer look. And then you see it is uh, not so serious. Um, uh, we zoom in uh, at London. And what you see is that, that unregistered land are mostly the roads, uh, railways, um, and some large pieces of land that are owned uh, for a long time and not transferred recently. So not after 1925. So when we look at the second uh, picture, uh, Wembley, uh, now it's, uh, Wembley Stadium is registered, that's clear, but there is an uh, except of those roads and railways. Uh, that's a railway uh, yard in Wembley. We go more to the center. Now, then you can uh, have a look. Uh, what is this? Now, there's a uh, golf club on the right-hand side and a park. So, yeah, this seems there's no need uh, to, to register. It is still unregistered land. Very simply, it is kept by that golf club uh, for a very long time. And as long as they don't want to transfer or uh, create rights on that uh, golf club land, uh, nothing will happen. So maybe that will change in the near future, that uh, they will say, uh, no, yeah, you have to register, but until now it is voluntary. So without any transfer, uh, it won't be registered. So you cannot find who's owning this. Uh, you cannot find a map in uh, the land administration of England and Wales. Um, yeah, that is about that, uh, that paper I've written. Um, yeah, this a model. Again, it is also simplified, I think. Uh, a model, a gliding scale, as we say, from movement from uh, very simple uh, registration of deeds towards. Um, uh, the most sophisticated 
registration of title. And we consider Australia with the Torrent system to be the most sophisticated registration of title, offering the most guarantees. And again, even within Australia, um, the, all states in Australia have a registration of title. However, they all differ a bit in how it is exactly uh, uh, formalized. So one state will offer more guarantees than the other. But again, very simplified, we put the old original system of the Netherlands, as we introduced it in 1838, as a very simple registration of deeds, offering absolutely no guarantees. And on the other hand, we find Australia. And what you can see here is that uh, the Netherlands, because we are focusing on the Netherlands in this paper, is slowly shifting from the left to the right, so offering more guarantees. So you could say that uh, the whole system of land administration in the Netherlands becomes better. Uh, we, uh, we can rely on it. Uh, and what is interesting is that uh, yeah, we are now on a uh, moment that we should consider, uh, should we move to um, title registration? And that's not something from a theory. That's a very practical question posed by the Dutch cadaster. Uh, should we do that? Uh, what does it offer more than the very reliable registration of deeds we have now at the moment? And according to our model, it seems that there is something and with multiplying scale, that, uh, but there is a step in between. And then the question should be, uh, does that making that step, so we are leaving the, 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 the system of uh, registration of deeds behind us and we move to title registration, uh, is that worthwhile? Uh, that's something that you can uh, have a long debate, uh, so, of, so of course about money, and it's not an easy decision. Also because you know, uh, suppose that in 2023, the land administration in the Netherlands will introduce title registration. Now, then we have the same as we saw in England and Wales, that not from day one to day two, we suddenly change into title registration, but there will be a moment, for instance, at the moment you transfer the land, that then uh, it will, won't be anymore under the old system we had, but then we make a move to title registration. Um, yeah, when we are talking about a weak system of uh, registration of deeds, uh, then uh, the US, partly, I have to say, because in other parts we have also title registration. But in the US, there are uh, this the registration, by the way, is there on county level. That uh, yeah, in a lot of counties that didn't digitalize their system, uh, still relying on paper. Uh, even sometimes papers are disappearing. There are stories that, that uh, a deed has been uh, offered to the registrar and it disappears behind, uh, uh, behind the desk. Uh, that you find very weak uh, systems without guarantees. Now, yesterday we also uh, discussed the importance of a good system of land administration. So you can prove your rights. Uh, because of uh, the reason that you can go to a bank and say, no, I'm offering my, uh, uh, my land as a collateral and uh, I want a loan from you. That at the moment that the bank is not going to believe that you are really the owner because the whole system of land, uh, land administration is very weak and offers absolutely no guarantee. Um, yeah, that's a, then we have a problem. I cannot get money from the bank unless uh, maybe I pay a lot of interest and my loan is very small compared to the value. Now, in uh, the US, they found a an, uh, an solution and that's not offered by the government, by, by the private sector. Um, I will talk about it uh, more in depth in, in, uh, in uh, lecture uh, number five or number six. Um, but it's called uh, title insurance. So it is just an insurance company 
uh, what they do is like you insure, uh, yeah, you take an insurance for your uh, own house again, uh, fi against fire or uh, burglary. And the same uh, they offer for you as an owner, because then they say, yeah, okay, uh, we insure it. And at the moment, there is something wrong with your title. So you purchase it from someone who pretends to be the owner. And later on, the real owner comes. Then we will pay for the damages. Not only for you, but also for the mortgage bank. Um, what's interesting to see is that this whole uh, 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 practice of title insurance um, became, became so common for especially the mortgage banks that even in those states and the counties where they have um, title registration, so you would say the government is offering the guarantee that even in those states, still a title insurance is needed before a bank will give you money. So you could say that the whole private sector has taken over uh, a large part of uh, the security. Uh, so even when the government is offering that security, they still don't believe in it. They want the title insurance. Okay, and I, I took this and uh, it is really advertising what you see. Why do I need title insurance? And that's crucial for a home buyer. So without this, yeah, eh, you cannot get, uh, no one will believe you. Eh? Uh, you need this in a two days climate where fraud and forgery are on the rise. Now it's a bit, I think, of nonsense because uh, title insurance is more than 100 years old. And then, uh, yeah, final, uh, the new technology. Uh, we'll also deal with this in Lecture 5, uh, the blockchain. Uh, yeah, I suppose you have heard about it. Uh, computers are calculating all the time. Is something uh, wrong or right? Uh, is A the owner or is B the owner? Uh, also something that's uh, from the private sector. And interesting is this uh, picture from India that you can see that uh, yeah, in nearly 50% of the states in India, again, land administration and land law is dealt with in India on uh, state level. So there's not a task of the central government in Delhi, but this uh, task of the government of each state. And that you see that in a lot of states, uh, they're working on uh, uh, introducing a blockchain for land registration. Uh, a reason behind this is that uh, because there are also uh, states uh, having uh, title registration, um, like Andhra Pradesh, and even Andhra Pradesh is uh, one of the states that are investigating the use of blockchain. And it has to do also with uh, the fact that uh, people uh, don't trust the government uh, because of. Uh, bribery, so you go to the register and you give him a money and he will change it. That is something that is not, I'm not inventing, but it's also described. And it's also uh, one of the problems is also that the uh, access to information is uh, very limited. Uh, in Kerala, for instance, what they did is to uh, fight corruption. They had another approach. Uh, because the government introduced uh, what they call local uh, booths where you can go and uh, have uh, investigate land administration yourself. But it needs that the government uh, uh, introduce also uh, digitalization. While in Andhra Pradesh, uh, you still have to go to the office and there's someone uh, taking a paper out of a desk and then you can uh, see the information you need. So Kerala has another approach than uh, the other states. But it's interesting to see this, uh, that uh, yeah, the blockchain uh, might also uh, be a tool to introduce more security in the field of land administration. And also in the Netherlands, this discussion if we should uh, think about introducing blockchain. Okay, um, yeah, in uh, next week, uh, we will look at the aims of land administration. Um, 
the length administration triangle that's uh, mentioned in the paper by Stig and Mark. We will have a closer look at those rights, restrictions, and responsibility. So that is the boring legal stuff, but uh, you need to have more uh, knowledge about that and to understand the importance also of land administration, but also to compare systems of land administration between countries. Uh, we will have a look at the land transaction. Um, this typically Dutch that there are the basis registraties, key registrations or key registers. Uh, because in the Netherlands, uh, our uh, the cadaster is part of uh, what we call the basis registratie. And then uh, I want to have with you uh, the discussion about that video about uh, who owns England. Are there any questions? I see a question. Uh, yes. I didn't quite understand the blockchain. What happens mainly? Um, yeah, block blockchain is is. Uh, I think you know Bitcoin. And uh, what a blockchain is is that uh, computers are calculating. It can be anything. If a transaction, uh, for instance, a transaction if this valid. And what you do is that, yeah, uh, in fact, therefore, it also uh, refers to chain. So they're checking the whole chain of, uh, so I am the owner, but I transfer it to B, B transfer it to C, C transfer it to D. And what the computer will do is check that whole chain. And also then the last uh, transfer. Uh, it is possible that there is an imposter and the whole idea behind the blockchain is that, uh, that, that uh, so they call it a fork. So the, the real owner is X, but there is also a transfer to I, to Y, sorry. And uh, what they, uh, the idea behind the blockchain is, uh, the, also very simplified, is that uh, the, the majority of the computers will decide who is the real owner. So what transaction is valid? But I will talk more about it in uh, lecture uh, six. Other questions? Maybe good to open the cameras now to start the yes. discussion. Uh, I have a question. Um, so in our geo-governance course right now, we're learning a lot about how uh, spatial data infrastructure is uh, we're trying to coordinate across Europe, for example, through the Inspire Directive. And I was wondering whether there's instances where cadastres are have been explored as being across uh, multiple countries, like trying to coordinate in a region to have some uh, yeah, consistency, I guess, in the approach. Yeah, they are working on it, but it's extremely difficult uh, because also of that historical uh, context. So all countries within Europe have different systems. You can compare them. You might understand it, but there are peculiars. So slight differences. So even the, the Dutch registration of deeds, you cannot compare with the, the, the Belgian registration of deeds or the French registration of deeds. Uh, although the origin is all Napoleon. Um, there are some uh, is, uh, ideas about how to solve this. And indeed, you mentioned Inspire, but Inspire, um, one of the data sets of Inspire are uh, indeed uh, the parcel data. So you would say, uh, okay, on the level of parcel data, uh, we should all be the same. So we can exchange that. That's true. But of course, the parcel data, uh, only the information about the parcel, the size, uh, the, the, the digital map is not enough. In that administration, we need to know about the rights and who owns those rights. And then we hit another problem that the rights are not the same in the countries. So the land law, that is part of the civil code, so where the lawyers are dealing with, is also national. Then you get the problem, is ownership in the Netherlands, is it the same as ownership in Germany? Uh, in some sense, it is. 
And what they did, but it is a uh, project that ended, but this was Julis. And the Julis project said, okay, what we are going to do as land administrations, the agencies, will open up our systems. And it's possible because the digital. So several countries joined. And next to that uh, access, so for instance, for the Netherlands, I can access uh, the system in uh, England. Uh, next to the access, we will explain what we find there. So it is not really making one system, but you can have cross-boundary access, plus it is helping you to understand the information. But now, yeah, can I, for instance, uh, enter the system of uh, Germany? Now, the answer is no, because the Germans don't like that just someone will enter their system and investigate. For the Netherlands, it's not a problem. We all can, uh, every citizen, even you, can uh, uh, enter it. You can investigate it. Even when you're living in Italy, you go to the website of the cluster. Um, there is some open data information, uh, that, that's uh, the, uh, the cadastral map. But if you want to know who owns uh, a parcel, you can just get it. You pay in a small sum, it is not much, I think it is two euro fifty or something like that. And you can see who is registered as an owner. If you want a bit more information, you want a deed, you can also ask it. In Germany, that's not possible. So now you see a lot of boundaries uh, to, to reach a system uh, that we have in uh, European SCI, where also the cadaster is part of it. So it's ongoing work. Uh, another project is uh, the uh, what is that called the Crobeco project, and uh, that will make it possible that you can register a, a deed made up by, uh, for instance, a public notary in the Netherlands, that you can register it in Spain. So we recognize it, but it's only between a little a limited number of countries. That answers your question. Yes, thank you. I thought it would be a very complex thing to do, and. It makes sense. Extremely yeah. complex. Uh, you, you, you could say the spatial side is a bit covered uh, by Inspire, but in a, in a rather simple manner, because, for example, only two-dimensional parcels. It's not even required that there are vector maps. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, it could also be a scanned map, uh, because some countries were too afraid uh, that they could not meet the requirements uh, and when the data specifications were made for the cadastral parcels, uh, it was really a very simple uh, yeah, data set. And it is yeah, not supporting uh, the new developments such as 3D parcels. And it is totally not including uh, the administrative or, or, or legal sites and, and the involved uh, yeah, uh, persons or, or, or parties. And uh, yeah, okay, in, in the remainder of the lecture, there will also be more about standardization and international agreements. And uh, there is uh, the ISO activity, uh, the International Standards Organization, to work at least on an agreed domain model. More qu yeah. questions? Okay, um, I see it is now 2.35, I talk too much. Uh, shall we have a break for 10 minutes and I have a small presentation about my uh, on assignment one. And maybe in the meanwhile, there are two important questions. It's about the teams, because I think it is good that you we have a small group, but I think... Uh, Peter, I, I think you agree that we still maintain the idea of working together in teams. And the other question is, uh, um, yeah, what country would you like to describe research? So I think we should make three teams, uh, two pairs and one triplet. <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure, Rohit, how much you are being active uh, in the assignments. Uh, and uh, so I would suggest, for example, uh, but that's 
to be thought and discussed after the break uh, that you would be part of the triplet and that maybe you would join uh, the triplet that is focusing, for example, on a country such as Greece, a yeah, very interesting country. And also your master thesis supervisor is from Greece. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm kind of coupling you with uh, Chrysanthine. And uh, so uh, Eftergia Kalogiani could also uh, help. Uh, so this is just an initial suggestion. Now I not trying to influence any more the countries and the groupings or the teaming. <laughs> Let's have a 10 minute break. Yeah, um, uh, at, uh, I'll, I'll pitch off the recording now. Yes.